Go Jackers. What is going on, everyone, and welcome to Rec Talk. Hope you're having a great Friday today. Um, it's going to be a short video, but a lot of stuff to talk about. Look, in the rapidly developing landscape of college football, things just keep happening. Um, one of which we're going to talk about at the end of the video, I think, signals the death of the NCAA in college football. I mean, we kind of already knew that was the case. <clears throat> but first, and why was this not already done um, in this upcoming season? Quarterbacks and a player on defense is going to have uh, helmet mics. Same thing they've had in the NFL for 30 years. For 30 years, the NFL has had the ability for an offensive coordinator or whoever the play caller is to pipe it right in the helmet of the quarterback. Um, Michigan wins a national title, um, cheating off sign stealing. Now is the time, right, to uh, make this change. I'm glad. I, I, I'm glad they're making the change. I don't know why um, this wasn't already implemented. <clears throat> if you look at some of the reasons why, it's like, oh well, it's cost prohibitive. Blah blah blah. How much money does it really cost to implement that kind of sy system compared to what? Other things you spend in your athletic department seems negligible to me. Seems like a silly argument, but I am glad to see it coming. Also, so first, NFL helmet mics. Uh, along with that, we're getting a two-minute warning. So they're really, you know, two things that mirror the way the NFL is done, which makes sense too. I mean, with preserving the saint, I don't even, it's a bad term, the sanctity of the game. You know, the tradition of college football, you probably need to have the two leagues as similar as possible with one feeding the other. Um, so at the end of each half, there'll be a two minute, they're going to call it a two minute timeout in college football, but it's essentially just a two minute warning as it is in the NFL. So pretty much eliminate sign stealing. Obviously you could snipe um, the radio communications from the other team. And I'm sure that that will come up at some point in college football. Um, there's no links. People won't go to cheat when the result is either just winning or losing. People are going to cheat, but I think this is definitely something that's long overdue. Again, the NFL has been doing this for 30 years. Now the main topic of the video, I'll just put it up there. NIL can now be used to recruit, really no restrictions, but just for now. So, uh, University of Tennessee uh, has filed a lawsuit against the NCAA. A federal judge has heard it. Uh, and just reading off the AP here, NCAA lost another legal battle Friday, which makes about the 40,000th legal battle they've lost. <clears throat> As a federal judge barred the organization from enforcing its rules prohibiting name image and likeness compensation for recruits by granting a pre preliminary injunction demanded by the states of Tennessee and Virginia. So what is an injunction? And this is why I put for now. An injunction is basically a legal action where you say, look, what our grievance is about, we can't wait for the lawsuit to play out. So we need you to make a ruling now so that what we're arguing in the lawsuit is even worth arguing at that point. Um, so what, what these schools are saying is, Hey, if, if you don't allow us to do this, then uh, we're going to, I guess, going to get left behind. I, I, the injunction was granted. Um, and it goes back to this, just catch on. I, I I'll just go out and say it nonsense of, Antitrust law validates anything these schools want to do. And it's weird that you're using antitrust law, which is, you know, the spirit of antitrust law is more competition to justify schools um, creating greater parity and really less competition. Um, but like I said, you can now use NIL to recruit directly. The NCAA has dropped all... Um, NIL investigations for now. So this isn't necessarily the final word on that. Again, the court case will have to play its way out. Uh, the judge wrote the NCAA stance likely 
violates antitrust law with Congress so far unwilling to give the association an exemption. The judge said athletes with a limited window are hurt by not being able to know their true value before committing to a school. So maybe there's something there. Um, they bring up the Sherman Act too. I guess that's part of the legal mumbo jumbo that's going on. Here's the thing. Uh, it doesn't matter what the result of this suit is. The NCAA is done in college athletics. I think now, first and foremost, I think you kind of got the cart before the horse. You just need to have contracts with players. College athletes just need to have contracts. Wouldn't that just clear a lot of things up uh, as far as opt-outs, as far as NIL, their exact value, blah, blah, blah. Just have contracts that they enter in with the school, right? With the school. Um, what you're going to see happen in the next, I would say, five years or so is the NCAA is just going to get out of out of college football because they can't do anything. If you can't issue a punishment, a punishment or regulate the sport, enforce rules, then there's no point in even doing this. Who can do that, though, are conference commissioners, ADs of schools, and you could just do it, again, bringing it full circle to the top end of the video, how the NFL's done, where you have owners, owner the ownership groups, and they kind of make decisions. You have a commissioner. You could even have a college football commissioner. And um, look, one school is not going to let the other especially at the top of the heap, like take Alabama, Georgia. You know, if one of them's trying to do something underhanded, the other one's going to speak up and say something about it in a system like that. Um, and I think it would work. What I do know is the NCAA doesn't, the way the NCAA has ran things up to this point, is pretty crappy and really the reason that we're in this spot to begin with. The NCAA for probably the last 30 years has just been trying to validate their own existence um, to the world of college football by picking on schools um, that they know didn't ha really have the money or the resources to fight them back. So, look, part of me hates it. Part of me is heartbroken because what college football was when I grew up, and, and you can even take away, like, set aside some of the NIL stuff. It's gone, though. It's gone. It's not coming back, and we can't be resigned to self-pity over that. You know, I know a lot of people, oh, I'm not going to watch it anymore. Yes, you are. You're going to watch college sports. If you're watching a video like this, uh, you're going to watch college football pretty much no matter what. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. I got a lot of videos to edit, get uploaded. Hope you have a great weekend. You have a good one.